Hi guys, it's Katie, and first off, I want to point out the obvious. I have a really, really bad farmer's tan right now because I just worked at a car wash this past weekend for my church. I got really burnt because I'm stupid and didn't put on sunscreen, but I decided to embrace it and film this video because, I mean, we're not perfect. Today's video is all about my favorite books of the moment and just basically my book style and books I like and things like that. Books that I gravitate towards are kind of almost like chick flicky books, if I could describe it that way, I'm not really sure. I like romance novels that are kind of like real fiction so I like teenage romance and like boys and drama and like shopping so I guess if the books that I read were made into movies they would be chick flick movies so I guess that's how I describe my book style and I know that a lot of you guys don't like that sort of book book style I guess and I understand that because for a while I was actually a Nancy Drew like a holic I loved Nancy Drew books and I still do but I kind of gravitate towards these kind of books now considering it's almost summer and I'm kind of just you know, it's a girl thing. My book style has kind of just evolved into what it is now. My book style may be different than yours, so please don't call me out on it because I know everyone's different. That's basically what you get in life, so just, we're gonna roll with it. Yeah, so let's get started. Mostly, recently at least, I have been becoming more technologically savvy, I guess, with my reading. And I acquired this little thing called a Kindle Fire. To be completely honest, this is not my Kindle Fire. This is my mom. She got it for Christmas last year. But I have been using it recently. I get kind of impatient with waiting for books to come in the mail and stuff or having to go out to bookstores and get it. So it's so much easier to have this at my fingertips and just go online on, like, directly on this and buy a book and then have it like come directly to here in like seconds. It's the best thing. Being a lazy girl with mono, this seems like the better option at the moment. So I use this a lot. And I'm not sure any of the specifics about this. I don't even know where this case is from. It's my mom's, I'm just gonna say that. And it's really cool, so I like it. So I'm just gonna talk about some of the books that I've recently read on here and have liked. The first series I wanna talk about is this one right here. This particular book right here is either the fifth or the sixth. I always forget the order of this book series because the funny thing is, is I have been reading this book series since about sixth or seventh grade. I can't remember exactly when I started getting into this series, but I know my friends and I were completely obsessed with this for a long time back in the day, back in the middle school day. But the author, like, all of a sudden just stopped putting out new books, and it, like, was totally a cliffhanger. So we were kind of just confused, and I kind of just gave up on reading it. So I, there was the first three books which came out, like, pretty decently close to each other, like, within the same year and whatnot. And then, the, like, the author, like, got stumped or something and just didn't put out another book for, like, two years. This book actually came out quite recently, a couple months ago, and I read this when I was in the Bahamas, but I kind of had to reread the entire series to figure out what the heck was going on because I hadn't read the first and second and third books since like three years ago. So I had to reread those ones, or at least the second and third, because the first one was very, you know, I could remember that. But then all of the plots and such just kind of mixed itself together and I got really confused. So I reread them and then over the Bahamas I took, or I bought two of them on here and I read them while I was at the pool and stuff, but one thing I will note is this is really not good with sunlight. It has a really weird glare thing. Once the sun went down at the pool and I had like a nice umbrella over me, it was nice to read this, but I will admit it wasn't great for beach reading. So the first book in the series is called I'd... wait, I'd tell you I'd love you but then I'd have to kill you. It's actually kind of long and I'm sure you guys have heard of it because it was really really popular back in like middle school. So it depends on how old you are of course, but it was a very big series back when I was in middle school and now the author finally came out with two new books or one new book and the last one I bought just to rekindle my knowledge of this book series. So a little background about this series, it's about this girl named Cami who goes to this school for spies and it's like an all girls school called Gallagher Academy and it's like with all these girl spies and they're training to be like the next James Bond but the girl version. Just a side note, if I could be any profession other than a filmmaker of course, that's my number one, I would definitely be a spy because it seems so like cool and stylish to be like James Bond spy but the girl version. I don't know if you guys really know my mysterious side, but I definitely have one of those. So yeah, I would definitely be a spy if I actually knew how to do a cartwheel or something like that. I think I did do gymnastics back in the day, but only for like a week because I realized I was not flexible whatsoever and I had no experience at all and no future in the gymnastics field. So I think I gave up on that. But anyway, 
back to the books. Um, they're about this like spy academy. Of course a romance has to be thrown in there or else I'd be totally uninterested. So this whole like guy academy like comes to their academy and like needs somewhere to stay so they hang out with them and like stay in the same academy under the same roof and like all of them like have romances with each other and it is so 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 cute and cool and not that like gushy mushy gushy so it, it's written really well despite the fact that it's written for like a seventh grade audience. Despite the fact that I'm really into English and whatnot and I like big words and vocabulary, I still like to read like easy books that don't make my mind like want to shut down. I like it when I don't have to read the same sentence over and over just to figure out what the whole thing is talking about. So I do give kudos to this author, Allie Carter. The two that I read while I was at the Bahamas Bahamas. The two books I read while I was on vacation um, were Cross My Heart and Hope to Spy and Out of Sight, Out of Time. So those are the two most recent books in the series and they're really, like, really good. I was kind of, like, into it and I'm really hoping she writes another one. So I don't want to talk too much about it. I don't want to give too much away and whatnot because I'm known for giving away spoilers and everything. So I'm just going to stop talking about this series now and go on to the next one. I love this series and I love my Kindle Fire. So if you guys are looking for a nice way to read books and you are tired of going to the bookstore and wasting your money on things that just take up space, then definitely invest in one of these, and I really like it, so cool. Okay, so the next book I want to talk about is this book called One Night That Changes Everything, and it's actually really, really good. My friend lent this to me along with some of the other books I'm going to talk about, um, but I'm really, really impressed with this book. This is one of those books that you can like start reading at 8 o'clock and say you're only going to read like a chapter and end up reading until 2, like finishing the entire book, because I do that all the time. I tell myself, Katie, please make this book last and read it like a chapter at a time, put it down, come back, but no, I'm one of those people that likes to read books in one sitting because I just get so into it. And I want to know what's going to happen, and I, I can't resist. So this is one of those books that definitely will get you into it and like obsessed with it, like within, you know, the first second chapter. It's the author of Two Way Street, which is actually the other book I'm going to talk about. So they're the same author and written similarly, the same style. Usually, when I really really like a book, it's not just the topic or like the subject that I like; it's the style of writing. So Lauren Barnholt, I think that's how you pronounce it, she wrote both of these books and it's a really nice style of writing because like the other ones I just talked about, it's kind of for a younger, not for a younger, but like for a teenage audience. It's written in a way that's not like hard to understand, it doesn't have like big words, but then again it's not written for like a five year old. It's also like a romance book style and they're pretty much the same like size, they're not huge, but this one is about a girl um, named Eliza who has this notebook where she writes like all of her deepest darkest secrets and whatnot. I used to have one of those, um, but then my friends started finding it and making fun of me, so I didn't do that anymore, I guess. So her notebook has been stolen, and her ex-boyfriend Cooper has it, and blah, blah, blah. And his friends start blackmailing her to like give back the journal, and it turns out like all this like weird stuff is happening behind the scenes with Cooper, like he's still in love with her or something, and she doesn't know it, and it's like so cute. It's kind of a stereotypical love story, but there's lots of like little twists in there that you don't like see coming, and it's like kind of like on the edge of your seat romance kind of, and I really like it. I read this in one sitting, of course, because that's just me. This one wasn't as good. Um, it was still pretty good, but I read this one first and then got this one and then realized I didn't really like this one as much, but I still still like it more than other books, if that makes sense. It wasn't the best, but it was still pretty good. And it's called Two Way Street. It's about these two people, Jordan and Courtney, and um, they have this like relationship going and they decide they want to go to the same college, but then like Jordan, the guy, broke up with Courtney for an internet girlfriend, which is like ridiculous, right? Uh, but it turns out there's some little twists in there that you're not going to see coming. Uh, but they go on this road trip together to go look at the college before they go, and then they like rekindle their relationship and it's like really cute so I like this one uh, this one's definitely better but I like this one also and you know romance novels are kind of my thing so I like both of these so next I want to talk about Sarah Dessen who is my favorite author of all time for these sort of books and I kind of saved her until the end of this video just to say how much I love her and hopefully I won't run out of time but anyway Sarah Dessen she writes a whole lot of books I've read so many books by her and I can't even list the amount of books I've read by her. At first I read the book The Summer I Turned Pretty, and I forget who the author of that is. I bought that on my um, Nook before it broke. I had a Nook, but then it broke when I took it on a plane, so I kind of ditched that. So I read that book, and I was really obsessed with that series. So if you guys are looking for a nice beach read series, definitely look up The Summer I Turned Pretty. Then I googled it to try to figure out what other books were like that book, because I loved that one. Um, and then this one popped up, which is by Sarah Dessen. Let me find it on here, because I did read it on here. Um, 
and it was actually pretty recent that I read this. It's called The Truth About Forever, and it's actually a really, really nice, like, good book. It's a feel-good kind of book because um, in it, like, there's lots of dealing with loss, and it's kind of like a mature read. It has some life lessons in it, and that's why I like reading Sarah Dessen books, because they tend to have that sort of thing thrown in there, so you don't feel completely guilty, not guilty, but like, there's some good stuff in there too. It's not just all romance and kissing and gushy, bushy stuff. It's like, there's some life lessons and things you can actually learn from in here. So as I said, I've read a couple of books by her, but this one is really good. It's called The Truth About Forever. I think I read this book in like a week because I had mono, so I stayed home a couple days, and it took me a little while to read this book. It was kind of lengthy, so it took me a little while, but I definitely think that it's a great book to read because it had to do with like loss and dealing with loss, and I've uh, recently deal with a lot of that kind of stuff, so um, it was really just appropriate for the timing, and it was just a really great read, and it's about this girl who's living with her mom and her sister. Her dad um, died of a heart attack. She's still, you know, carrying that burden with her, and then she meets these people, um, this catering company, and it just like completely changes her life. She has this boyfriend who's really controlling and just nerdy and just totally a d-bag okay and then she moves on to hang out with this catering company and these wonderful people who teach her so many lessons and then there's this guy named Wes who's like super cool and when I think of him I think of Zac Efron so that's how I picture him in the novel like Wes is just really cool and like cute. He has this cool talent for making things out of glass and metal, almost like sun catchers and things. It's like really, really cool and they totally fall in love and it's like the best ending ever and I don't want to give it away too much but it's a really, really cute novel, especially if you're dealing with loss or things like that. It's really good and I really, really like it. It was very moving to me almost but in a really cute like romancy way. So the book I'm currently reading is called Lock and Key and it's also by Sarah Dessen which is kind of cool because it has the same sort of voice as the last one I just read which is called The Truth About Forever which I just talked about like two seconds ago but anyway so this book it has the same sort of voice but a totally different theme and idea and characters and everything and it's actually really really good. It's about this girl, um, gosh I always forget the main characters names of every single book I ever talk about but her name, oh, Ruby. Her name's Ruby, and she's this really pretty red hair. And when I picture her, I think of Rose from Titanic. And so, like, I think of all the Titanic characters, and when I'm reading this book, it's, like, really weird. And then the guy character, Nate, is, like, Leonardo DiCaprio, so I kind of, like, picture them when I'm reading this book. And it's really good because it's about this girl who has this really, like, not abusive, but just really, like, not-so-great mother. And uh, she lived with her sister and her mom for a while, and then her sister moved out to go to college. And then she's left with, like, a deadbeat, like, addicted to drugs mom and it's like really really like heart moving almost like wow I never really knew what it'd be like to live with it a mother like this like I don't know I've my whole life I've known like a constant family but I never really pictured it as being like this um, you know like what's going on on the other side of the fence or something I don't know anyway her mom just one day just walks out and leaves so she's living in this house by herself and then um, she it, like Things start breaking and obviously like a teenager cannot support themselves in a house by themselves. So she ends up moving in with her sister who is married to this guy who created like Facebook or something so he's like super rich and they have a huge house and she's living there and she feels like so incomplete and just not like she's not supposed to be there and kind of thing and that's like where I am right now but she has this like subtle relationship with the boy next door, Nate. But I'm almost about halfway so I don't really know what's going on yet. The plot's still kind of building in, mi in midair almost, so I don't really know what's going on, but it sounds really good to me so far. So definitely check out the Sarah Dessen books, and I know, um, is it something Lullaby is also a really good one. I know Lo, Lolu Fully Loaded was talking about it in her video. I hope that wasn't too boring for you guys, and I hope you guys learned some new book titles you might be interested in. Don't forget to let me know your favorite books in the comment section so I can, you know, add to my library of reading and whatnot. So, uh, thanks for watching and supporting my channel. I love you guys as always, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!